Hi everybody, welcome back. I am Go VR Go Home. Uh, today we're looking at part six of my layout update, uh, and I'd like to announce the name of this layout is going to be GVO Central or GVO Central. Um, GVO being G as in Go Transit, V as in Via Rail, O as in Ontario Northland, or GVO, go via, or go home. I don't know. It all fits like a puzzle, I guess. But uh, it works. So, you know what they say, you don't name a pet unless you plan on keeping it. Same thing with the layout. Now it's got a name, let's get to work. So I made a few changes since uh, my last video update. So I'm just going to take you through a couple of those now and I'll show you other work that I have done. Uh, so we, obviously we've got my yard here, uh, sorry about the mess, <laughs> but uh, basically so looking at basically this is my uh, it's my doorway here, uh, it's a swing gate, got my the latch on it, does lock into place and whatnot, holds it very steady here. And uh, I'm gonna put a cross brace most likely from there up to here to kind of give it more support But from where it is right now, it's fine. I usually just use this as a duck under uh, Because once I get my tracks in place here, it's gonna be locked in uh, So I did put the cork down obviously uh, on to here. I just used a giant cork sheet because Don't really know how I'm gonna be having this section compared to up here, but also when we look at how it's coming in, this is obviously mainline, so I've got a little bit of a, a curve to it there. So I'm just going to show you this, sorry. And then it comes out onto here from there. And it looks really cool when the train runs through it, it you know goes down there, and then yeah. Then uh, this is a, a side entry to the yard, and I'm not 100% on this yet, because I think I want to put like a, a diamond crossing here, like in this section, or even just a, another switch, so that I can go up into here as well. But again, nothing's in stone with this, so it's not one of my focus right now, it's more or less just my main. Uh, the main's the focus, so I can get trains running around it. Uh, now one of the changes that I made, uh, you're going to see here, I had a three by three table right here. But I took it out and I pushed it down here to where the other uh, bridge is. And then I took my two by four and made it uh, a three by four. So it's a lot bigger all the way down. And you'll see, instead of it going straight and then in and then down, uh, it just goes right across, right to the, uh, the couch there. And uh, I feel it looks better this way. And this gives me some more real estate there to, uh, you know, work on the industry and maybe have a couple more tracks and whatnot. So that means I had to get rid of uh, the section here that raised up because I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So what I'm going to have here is uh, this section when it comes off of the, uh, the lift out here, or not lift out, but the swing gate. It's going to go into the, the wide curve and it's going to go right to the back and it's going to continue on. But yeah, I got to still cut the wood for this and the risers, but it's basically it's going to go up there. Then uh, I'm going to have another section because I have to have it come up kind of like how it was before, but instead of it being higher in the front, it's going to be higher in the middle, so going in between these two tracks here. And then it's going to just cross this one track, because you see how it goes out this way. 
it's just going to go across it and then it's going to stay up above all of this here and I guess I can kind of do it like this just to kind of show a representation although where I'm putting the cans is basically where track is going down below but yeah it's going to go like this over top and it's going to come from there into here over this and then out here and then it's going to go downgrade while this is going upgrade because we still have to get to the bridge that's going to be right there bridge to bridge and then this line here will in turn go in as well and the three tracks will meet up now the thing is with this one of the things i was thinking about and i'll, I'll get to it after that was originally supposed to be one track bridge right there so uh one one bridge i'm making it a double instead uh oh, again i'll get more into that when i get in there but i just wanted to show you this part for now uh let me know what you think uh we've got the single main here and then the second line goes up and over which goes across and it's going to come across here and it does come out this way yeah, I guess this is a little bit easier to see it like this, uh, which will, it will be coming out this way. So it basically just goes over all the tracks. And I do believe that I'm going to make this a double as well. So at some point here, it's going to have a switch and it goes into a double. And then we have the double main come down. So that's, that's basically that part. Sorry, I put the cat to sleep. Oh, well, she's not into trains, I guess. Another thing I've been working on here uh, would be the whole yard, basically. Because it's the biggest part of the whole layout. It's the centerpiece, so it has to look, um, you know, awesome, right? And because it's very, it needs to be somewhat prototypical, or for the most part prototypical, as, as prototypical as I can make it <laughs> to the, uh, the North Bay shops. Um, you know, this is obviously going to take me the longest. It's not like a, a quick glue job and there you go but um basically i'm taking the foam board like i'd said before and i cut it to the length of the module so it goes well this is two pieces here that doesn't matter more that goes right to here and uh basically i just i cut out somewhat of a, a hillish kind of look and then i did the whole weaving of cardboard on top I have to go over that with plaster cloth, but as you can see, I went right down, right down, and it's glued in there. I think my whole weaving thing sucks, but <laughs> it's actually pretty strong. Uh, the hot glue definitely holds it in place really well, and uh, that's basically as far as I got. I'm not going to go any farther than this one until I have more of an idea of what's going in here. I kind of know, but at the same time I don't know, size, size-wise, and how much room it's going to take up, but I do know what I want to have there, so we'll, we'll, again, we'll get to that later. <laughs> but yeah, I hope that looks cool, um, can't wait to scenic that, and the cool thing about this is that with the fascia that I'm going to have on here, the, the hardboard, it's still going to cover this, right? This is very solid, the way it is. But when I put the hardboard on, on front, right, it's going to come down maybe about an inch, an inch or two below the actual wood here. It's going to be secured to the front, and then it's going to be glued up here. So it's going to be very strong on there. It's not going to bend or flex at all. It'll be very flat. But what I can also do, because there's nothing in behind here, right, like if I put my hand in here, you can kind of see, right? Um, if I need to put switches on here, because that's so small, I can put the switches, drill a hole right here, pop the switch through, there you go, click, click, right? And I can do that right along there. Or, because I haven't really decided yet, I can either do the, you know, what I just suggested, with a little, you know, switch here, or I'll make a box, put it right on the front with all my switches on it. Um... If I do that, it's basically, it's, you know, one box per table because there's a number of switches per section, or I make one control box, which would 
probably sit right along this one here, but then I'd have to run all the wires to this table, to this table, and to this table, which would make it really hard for it to come apart unless I'm using all my, you know, snap connector, wire things, whatever. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's an idea, right? But I'm getting there. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. But uh, I've got a bunch of feeders dropped as well, basically for these two. So I'll drop those two, those two. Same thing with that end, I dropped two, two, two and two and all that. But none of them are you know, wired in, obviously, because they don't go anywhere. It's just it's the feeders that are dropped, and they're all the same length. I'll make, you know, a control panel or whatever after. Uh, and then I've got the cork that I added up here, which is really neat because it covers up a lot of the pink. And then I went over most of this here with um, my, I guess it's like a drywall compound because, uh, and I'm gonna have to do a second, second coat here. So I raised it up with a cork. I've got the big cork sheets again. And uh, basically, I want to. It, it's different levels, right? It that's that's the thing that I'm trying to show here with basically how I'm doing these tracks because they're not all the same height. Real life, in in real life, they're not all the same height, but they all have to line up, basically, and they all have to work. And you have to be able to transition your train from one section to the next, worrying about derailments and whatnot. You know, hopefully there's no imperfections in it. Hopefully it does work. Like I can run a train back and forth end to end on this one. Those aren't down yet. I just sat them there just to see how it would look. Uh, but basically this whole area is gonna be raised up just a little bit by the cork. And in order to go down, you know, you have to create a slope. And I do that with that compound. It goes on pink and then it dries, you know, white. I did the same thing over here as well. Because it comes off the main there and then it goes down. I, I just sanded it after. You're not even going to see any of it really because it's going to be all covered with ballast or greenery. But I still have to go in and shape it out a bit more once I get the track down. I just wanted to add my elevations there and then fill in some of the cracks and whatnot back there that needed to be. So all the uh, the cork roadbed work there, it was, well, it was difficult because there's so many tracks going in every which direction. I probably could have used one of these sheets instead, but I'm, I'm trying to still make it look, you know, somewhat realistic, so... Uh, let's let's get in there and take a look from the other side Okay, so here is module one. That's the uh, four by two Sorry four by three uh, It comes out and here's the three by three that was on the end I'm gonna cut the wood for that very soon. I do have it. It's already traced out and everything It's just it's noisy and it takes forever so You know I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it uh, and then obviously the bridge, I still haven't found <laughs> the bridge I want to use, but it's good though, because I mean, now that I'm doing it as a double bridge, um, now I don't have to buy more stuff and then sell whatever I would have gotten at the time. So, but this all came about through here because this was originally one track, which is that main one on the, the farthest one away which goes right back and then it goes around. Uh, it was supposed to have a switch right in and around here, a number seven, and then it would have ended in two, right to there, right? Which kind of goes into this. But instead, I was like, you know what? You know what I can do? I'll just run two, because this way I can have a train running around the whole outside perimeter, right? It would go around the whole outside, and it would even go over to here where I'm going to have my next, um, you know, modules later on when I build those. Or I could stick to the inside, 
and go through this one here, the front one, and then go through here, and then go into the yard, and come back around this way. Wow, I'm dizzy. Sorry about that. Uh, which would come out this way, past the Coke bottle, and then back in here. So, essentially, I can have two trains running continuously all the way around um, while I'm doing work in the yard, which is obviously all right here. Sorry about the mess again. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's just what I've got. I've got the cork to here. Uh, I kind of put down my super elevated curves there, but the tape, I was like at the end of the roll, so of course the tape isn't as sticky, so that's why it's kind of coming up there. I'll, I'll probably replace it when I get a new roll, but that's, that's obviously, that's how I do it, with the very thin tape. Yeah, lots of work. I've done lots, <laughs> almost too much. No, it's, it's not even a thing. Uh, you'll even see here, module 5, I because this is my smallest module, uh, if you're following on Instagram or, or even on my Facebook page, you'll see you know, that I did a couple of, I posted a couple of pictures where I was showing my the steps of how I got even this far, which I'll continue doing obviously, so uh, go take a look at the Instagram if you want to see you know my step by step with this. But it was basically cutting a front wall, cutting two side walls, um, having a, a portion on the inside here where I cut out water and I dropped it lower than the outside part and I used a bunch of supports underneath and now I'm just filling in with foam all the way around and then I was carving it with a knife and with this tool here which basically it's like a file, creates a mess, as you can see. And I'm just kinda, you know, working it down a bit, all the way around, so it's more gradual. Uh, so there's gonna be a, you know, it's a, obviously it's a pond, right? Um, or a small, small lake. Uh, but it's, it's basically just on this module here, and I'm gonna make it so that it kinda continues on to the next module, and so on that way. And then I have an industry in here which comes off of this track, so the track goes out here, down the grade, and then it comes into here. So that's that's kind of my idea for this section here. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I've been working on really. It's gonna take a long time to do that, but do that with every single module, because there's a lot to do. I'm just hoping to get my track in, but in between doing things like waiting for glue to dry, waiting for plaster to dry, you know, uh, waiting to get more materials if I run out of materials, there's always something to do. And that was my answer to that yesterday, where I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna go create a box and then fill in that box. It's not totally done yet, obviously, but for the most part that's kind of how it's going to look and then I have to go in and put plaster on it and shape it out way more and then I'll be able to add water yay cuz I've always wanted to do that you'll even notice with the uh, the backdrop section here I also kind of did a bit of work with that as opposed to you know where that's all blocked off and even that's blocked off there so it only goes no, so high with that. Um, really hoping to, you know, make this look like a full section. Uh, you know, trying my best to uh, you know, fill it out as much as I can and make it look like a real scene. It takes a lot of work though. It takes a lot of work.